So Ed, what's going on here? Are we running for the hills today? Good morning, Susan. Thanks uh, very much for having me on the show. Uh, well, here are my first four words of advice to investors this morning before they pull the trigger on any trades. One, breathe in. Two, breathe out. Calm down. People are panicking, and I do not think that there is call for it. Um, you're seeing a significant amount of readjustment in the European regulatory environment uh, led by the Germans. This is cause for, uh, in, in some respects, this is a good thing. You know, we've, we've been calling it Rogers IA for better regulatory environment in Europe and the United States for years now. Uh, it's good that the Germans are being proactive in trying to create a better regulatory environment. It's definitely not good that they're doing it in a sort of cowboy fashion and running off on their own, imposing a short selling ban, arguably against the advice of their own regulator, Baffin, who said that short selling bans don't help anyone. Uh, and mm -hmm. further, from the, from the Asian point of view, uh, especially from the Japanese point of view, I mean, you, you noted yourself, the Japanese yen is, is strengthening in response to this crisis. Uh, it's right. sort of funny to say it, but you know, Japan becomes a safe haven uh, in times of crisis. Uh, our, our advice for our investors is, is frankly, stay put, increase your allocation to Japanese hedge funds uh, because they're going to be one of the best performing asset classes in the world, as we've been saying since okay. uh, 2009, and whoa, people whoa, whoa. need to just, Ed, just calm down. Let me jump in here. Okay, so you have the yen trading below 90 to the U.S. dollar. Some are saying if it does hold at these levels, I mean, that's a big, big problem for exporters. You're going to see Japan's economy being hit here. Sure, big problem for exporters. It also makes it a lot cheaper to buy overseas assets. Uh, and that's what you're going to find the Japanese doing. You know, there's a lot of dry powder in the system over here. Uh, Japanese banks are relatively healthy. Japanese corporations have great balance sheets. Japanese individual households have great balance sheets. In fact, much of Asia has a great balance sheet. Asia is where the cash is. Cash is okay. king right now. In this sort of environment where people are panicking and selling, like, like the sky is falling, there's going to be a great mm -hmm. opportunity for buyers. Okay, Ed, so you're going to be brave in here, maybe uh, go in and pick up some on the cheap since we have the sell-off taking place? We're, we're going to do what we always do. We're going to find smart hedge funds to invest in, protect on the downside, create a hedged equity portfolio, and, you know, maybe today, maybe this year's not going to be a great year. Maybe we're going to make somewhere, I don't know, 5 to 10 percent. We were thinking it was going to be 15 to 20 percent. But, you know, if we make 5 to 10 percent and the, the markets go down 25 percent, again, we think we'll have done, we'll, we'll have done very by our investors. Okay, so Ed, you seem pretty confident that uh, Asia is okay. What about what's taking place in Europe? I mean, everyone's concerned about contagion at this point, you know, from Greece spreading to Portugal to Spain. What does this mean for sovereign debts in the future? What about the recovery in the U.S.? You have jobless claims surprising the market, actually increasing this week. The, the, the Europeans have got to learn to act with one voice. Otherwise, the, Europe, the Euro's gone. Germany's going to the, 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 suffer the most if Merkel, you know, drives a dagger into the heart of the euro. And that's exactly what she's doing right now. She's destroying, you know, she's going to conceivably, you know, send Europe back to the 1950s and 1960s, and she's going to make it look like Eastern Europe did in the 1950s and 60s, not like Western Europe. We know what command economies look like. Ask anybody who lived in China or Russia from 1950 to 1990 what it's like to live in a command economy with very few financial tools at your disposal. It's a pretty grim place. That's not where I think the Germans want us to end up, but that is frankly where they're trying to go right now. It's a very Luddite reaction to start imposing bans on credit default swaps without having any conversations with your allies, your financial allies, mm -hmm. before, before taking this step. Okay, Ed, uh, thank you for those comments. One, one, one last comment, one last yeah. comment. Quickly, need, quickly. Remember, two weeks ago, the Chinese government turned on short selling. What should that tell you? if you're a European regulator trying to figure out what the future is. Okay, no, you, okay, I'm sorry, I gotta pick up on that. What does that mean, quickly, Ed? So, so the uh, Chinese turned on short selling? It, for a limited number of stocks, the Chinese government has approved short selling in their markets. The governments of Asia, full stop, have been pretty much in favor of a regulated short selling environment. It's healthy for markets. It increases liquidity, it improves price discovery, and it, it, it enhances investor confidence. You need a confident government and a confident regulator to say, we've figured out how to do this appropriately. 
And I believe that's what the Chinese government has done. They've said there's nothing inherently wrong with short selling. Most of the right. academic research will tell you that. So the knee jerk political reaction, which I think it is a very political reaction, to ban short selling overnight by the Germans. Is, is not well thought out, in my opinion. Oh, come on. Well, Ed, you're in the hedge fund business, so you need the shorts, right? Just to hedge out the bets as well. Okay. Well, but, but, but again, what do, you, what do you want? I mean, you're looking at Germany, the market's gone down 10% in the last five days. Do you think uh, the German government has accomplished its goal of creating financial stability? Of course not. It's absurd. They've increased volatility. That's not what they want. Okay. And they've, they've increased downside volatility, which is definitely not what they want. All right, Ed. Thanks for sharing your thoughts this morning. Ed Rogers, CEO of Rogers Investment Advisors. We're going to get a